um, not just uh, basketball and athletics. So we're looking for like, you know, campus, the total campus, right? And okay, why don't I tell you about when I arrived reading uh, Hazel Hughes and that we were assigned to, there were three dormitories in the houses. Yeah. Is it not two of you? Yeah. So, yeah, talk about, let us know about Hazel, you know, assigning the dorms, because one of the things that we don't have a lot of is people who can talk about Hazel Hughes and, oh, and the importance of Hazel to the women at Clark. Oh, she was our mentor, you know that. Yes, yeah. and you're one of the few people that really remembers a lot of that. Well, yes, because uh, we, you know, we went to a camp in Austin, that's all I know, and that's where I first met her. And, uh, of course, I was uh, country bumpkin here, you know, and going to there, so she was very nice. She sat down and talked to me, you know, and got me acquainted. And then uh, we went, we lived in uh, Woodland Hall. I did anyway. There were three dormitories, Woodland, Downey, and Blakely after a while. I never lived in Downey, but I lived in Blakely in the summertime. Yeah. But uh, there were about 15 or 16 girls in there with uh, Betty Smith as our head one at that time. And uh, I know Miss Hughes, if we had problems, we could go and sit down and talk to her. She was like a mother to us. And I know I, I flunked 24. So <laughs> I was all upset, you know. Too much basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too much, not enough math skills. Anyway. Uh, so she went and talked, went and talked to her and so forth. And of course the boys were coming back from the war. Right. So that you didn't have to have 20 credits, you only had 19. So I talked about going in the summer. She said, well, sure, go ahead. So then I decided I could save my mother 15 or 16 hundred dollars if I went in the summer. So I went three, three years and three summers. Okay. So I got, that's why I got through in 48 instead of 49. Right. 49 was really my time. So, you know, I, uh, anyway, I got through, graduated, and uh, I went from Clark University to Manchester, Maryland in five days and started teaching high school uh, English and uh, uh, junior world history, and then found out that I had the physical education for both junior and senior high school. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. <laughs> And then another one that graduated from with me, Marion, what was her last name? I don't know, can't think now. She went down and was uh, a phys ed teacher uh, two towns away from me, so we had our basketball teams <laughs> going back and forth. Now why, what was it about Clark that also gave you the background for the phys ed well, and your friend Because I had always been athletic. Yeah. And then of course uh, John, uh, Hazel Hughes had a wonderful, uh, physical education program for all kinds of games and, and we even could go and uh, go down and, and uh, uh, try out to be a referee and different things which I did and uh, you know and she brought in a swimming program and, and intramurals and, and uh, really we we had so much physical activity that we and I always so I just took books and went because and physical and then later I taught physical education at Templeton High School, which is now there again. So yeah, right. Three years there. So, yeah. so I've done just a little bit of everything all my life from teaching, you know, and I retired in 80, uh, 88, 87, 87. So was, like, I, you know, you had told me before, you know, when we, we've spoken about this before and, and other um, women in that time period, you mm -hmm. know, first coming to Clark that there was just a lot of physical activities, as you say. There was swimming. It's true. There was what? Uh, and there was rowing. Rowing. For those that wanted to do the rowing. There was Which is unusual. There was archery. Yeah. Uh, let's see, there was uh, volleyball, basketball. Uh, I don't think, there might have been softball, but I never participated. Yeah. I don't yeah. think we ever did that. Right. No. And there was some sort of calisthenics or Oh yeah, yeah. We, every uh, we were required uh, once or twice a week to go down in the gym there and for calisthenics, marching, uh, all kinds of things, you know. So I got a good idea for a program when I went to teach physics. Right. Yeah. 
Right. And so that's what I wanted to know. There must have been some requirements. For oh, yeah. We had, we had to go, I think, twice a week. Twice a week to the gym. Yeah. And that's when we wore our gym suits. Yes. And we did a lot of marching, for, you know, types of marching and all kinds of games. We didn't do much um, folklore or uh, dancing or anything. Yeah. It was more calisthenics and things and tumbling. Tumbling. Tumbling, you know, things like that. Yeah. Now, so so did they have actual classes for basketball and things like that, or was that more extracurricular? Uh, well, it was intramural things. That was, that, yeah. that was extra because we were not able to go into the gym, you know. Yeah. For a long time. Right. Oh, no, no. Women couldn't go in the gym, no. And we could only, only what, what, 20 or 25 percent of the population could be a woman. You couldn't, you couldn't have, I think, think 25 percent of the student body could be women. The rest had to be men. Oh, so oh yeah. There was, a, there was an early, there was an early thing about that. It got changed later, probably by your time. Yeah. Right, and then during more time, and of course the guys are coming yeah, back. Yeah, right. Coming back. So and, they they limited the number of women coming in. Oh, oh they're they're the person that told me about that. Oh, yeah, well, I think that was when it was set up yeah. with, with uh, Miss Hughes and uh, with, oh, Henry Spitzer, Henry somebody, I can't think of Yeah. It. You know who I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. And uh, and when they got the women coming in, there was a stipulation by the by the board that, that only a certain percent of them could be women. Right. For the first, and I think that changed in the 50s. So. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Obviously, Hazel Hughes was a big part of oh, yeah. And the for a athletics. long time, they didn't recognize her and give her any status at all. And that made me cross because she was just, just like a, a teacher. I mean, she wasn't really, didn't give any dignity for a while. But then they could put her in the right way. And she was a marvelous person. Just, you just had to relate to her. She, she was right there on top of everything. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I didn't come to Clark till 1964, mm -hmm. and I mean, she was obviously, you know, a very influential person. Oh, yeah. At that point, she was dean. Oh, yeah. And, um, a long time coming. Right, and then she died in 68, which is when I left, yeah. but you could see that she had made her oh, mark on the school she did, for too. a long time, from 42 till 68, she yeah. was involved. Yeah, but well, she had... Uh, at the dormitory where we lived in Woodland Hall, there Betty Smith. Yeah. And uh, Betty worked a lot with, with Miss Hughes on with relationships with the girls. And then there was a Kathy or Kathy somebody later on, I don't remember what her last name was, that also worked with Miss Hughes. Right. Uh, so, think. so I mean, we could look back and see, but did she have a specific title then when you... I don't... No, because yeah. I can't remember what it was. What it was, but I, she was just, you know. She was in charge of the women, that's all. Yeah, she was in charge. Of and, and she was with us at the camp when we first came. And then she set up uh, health classes. We had all the required to take a health class and make sure that we knew all about, you know, what sex and everything. And yes. And what to expect and what not to expect and so forth. And she had a doctor friend that came in that was nice. Well, she was still very involved in that when I came in in 64. We had a little handbook that I think we still have yeah, for yeah. the women. Yeah, for right? the women. For the women, that's right. And then <laughs> uh, the botany professor, oh God, Professor Potter. Yes. He hated women. He did not like the... That uh, was another question I was going to ask. That, that he did not like the women. and uh, But he did say that, uh, you know, you could see his attitude. But if you did well, he was there to praise you. you know. Right. Yeah. But if you fool around with it and you didn't give work in the English class, right? You know, so you were, you were. here, women came to Clark in 42. You're there in 45, 45 to 48. And you, so there's still some resistance to having women at Clark. Oh, yeah. He didn't like them. How about uh, New, uh, Rudy Nudemacher? And, and he was fine. He, he worked well with everybody. Trying, right. Trying to, That's what I understood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was very good to helping out with the uh, the rowing. Rowing. Yeah. 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 And uh, he he was very good about working with the children. And most of the other professors were okay. You know. So he. Potter was the only one who stood out in my mind. 
that was resistant still. Yeah. I think he came around after a while. But yeah. if he didn't want anybody fooling around with him, it was right. his time that he was going to be involved. And he <laughs> wanted women to take it seriously. Yes, he did. Yeah. And of course, one of the most interesting classes was geology with uh, Gene Little. Mm. And uh, there were trips that we took. And we had a bad snowstorm one, one year. And uh, we're out there, we're making a snowman out in front of Woodland Hall, and uh, we're having our snowball fight, and then Doc, Dr. Little is just going home because his house is right next to the <laughs> And we accidentally hit him. <laughs> so he turned around, he turned around, picked up some snow, and fired one back, and we all started to laugh. And we finished this, the uh, snowman. This is like probably 47, 48, 47, I think. And, uh, then the West Telegram came, took a picture and put it in the paper. <laughs> and that's that's what I was gonna say. What did you do for fun and oh, and yeah. any funny stories and you oh, already yeah, you yeah, just yeah. went oh, right yeah. into I got it. a better one than that. We we had to take care one of the girls uh, had a baby and, and she we had to go take care of it. And it, it got sick. So we didn't know what to do but one of the girls had a child, so she said, I know what we'll do. She called Mrs. Little up. Jean Little's life. So she came over, of course, with Grandma and things like that. She stewed that baby down. She had it back to sleep in no time at all, and we felt much relieved. <laughs> <laughs> but we laughed about that, too. And then they had, um, the Jean Little's had parties, you know, president parties and so forth. Of course, we were right next door, so we got to acquainted with uh, he and his wife quite well. Yeah, nice, nice man. That's good. If I had a basketball at the and I cried out, and I was short, you know, and how many grandma played basketball, he's always tall people, but I had a bookshop. Coozie. Huh? Coozie was at a Holy Cross at the time, Bob Coozie, oh. and Andy Laster were over at the Holy Cross at the time, because we all knew his trick shots and everything. So I was fast, and I had a bookshop. So I played basketball first thing the first year. Second year, I played second straight because we had some taller girls come in and they were more proficient than, you know. But we played Rutgers, Simmons, Wellesley, Our Lady of the Elms, and I can't remember one more. And we beat them all. And uh, how about Radcliffe? Radcliffe. Radcliffe was, yeah. They were the ones that couldn't believe that these hillbillies came and beat them. And we beat him well, you know, like 10 or 15 times points. They didn't know what happened to us. But we were fortunate. We had we had some girls that were very, very good, mm -hmm. you know. And now who, um, was was Hazel out recruiting these girls, do you think? No, I don't no. think so. I think they just came to Clark. They came to Clark and then yeah, she. Yeah. And you had Kay Harrison and her sister, and you had Carl B. Laggers or Mary Laggers. You had, um, She looks a lot like me in, in some of the pictures there. Yeah. And um, Elaine, Elaine Cook. Yeah. Elaine Cook. Uh, Joyce Townsend. Who else is some of your can't think? Those were some of the good I remember, shots. yeah. So you did, you played well against them. And who coached you? Uh, I don't. Did anybody coach you? I don't think anybody coached. I think we practiced by ourselves, and I guess. And, uh, the shoes were there sometimes, but not very often. But not but very we didn't often. have any coach, really. We, we just all came from different places, and we all played basketball, and we just seemed to mess. You know, we had a fabulous team. So when you played these teams, was D Dean Hughes there, or were you just... I, I don't remember whether she was there or Betty Smith. Betty Smith, okay, may, Betty, Smith. Betty Smith may have been with us. Right. I think maybe she was. She was the one that yeah, was... She, I think she was there at some of our practices. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actual games? I don't remember. Yeah. That, that my mind is, I don't remember. Well, I just okay. know we went to these places and played, and we beat them. So you we kind of were just self, you you I just you know, developed the... Yeah, we played, I played, you know, two different years. plays, years. and... First year I was on the first string, and then second year I was on the JV. And so what was your nickname? Oh. <laughs> my, my maiden name is Butterfield. And so one day in, in the hall there, somebody called me Butterball. <laughs> and it stuck. In fact, I 
if I write you this play, for instance, I quite often say I love Butterworth because that's what they call me, you know. And then we had some funny stories. I couldn't stand the water when we first got there. And I used to bring my own water. So then, of course, you know, they had to play a trick on me, dump my water out and get some Worcester water and then bring in their friends to test my special water. So they did that for a couple of days, and then I caught on to what was going on. And I said, said to one of the guys, I forgot which one it was, Sidney's uh, friend, and I said, isn't that Worcester water just as good as Westminster water? And he looked at me and I said, yeah, I know it's Worcester water. So I, I, I found, they, they didn't like that when I found out. So they teased you. Oh, they teased me. Why I was a good country bump in here, so I teased me. So now, um, you know, we, we talked about, you know, that like Dr. Potter wasn't very open to having women. How about the men on campus? What was their reaction? What did you get from? Them? He was the only one, really. So even even your 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 colleagues, your fellow classmates, your male classmates. No, but no, by the time I was there, they were used to the women and some of them that gra bring them on to the college yeah. graduate. No, they were fine. Right. I didn't have any anything like that. They were happy to have us there. Um, so you, con you concentrated more on athletics, but what were there other clubs? Or oh, yeah, there was a Newman Club, and, and there was the... Um, this issue, I worked on the uh, yearbook. Yeah. Uh, and then there was, well, I didn't go to the Newman Club. There was another Christianity Club, I don't know what that was. In the Faith class, I think it was called. Yeah. Yeah, I was active in that. And uh, then there were classes, class reunion, and then, of course, you had the student body. And when I was there, Stan Guthrie, yes. the black boy, was the uh, head of the student body. Right. Yeah. And he was a wonderful man. And when I worked on the Christmas show, um, Joe Callender, I think his name was, he was the editor. Uh, he was one of the big, the big, the big black men. Two of them were really dark, you know. Yes. And uh, there was there weren't that many black people at Clark at that time, but they were fabulous people. Right. Yeah. Do you know Stan Guthridge? Is he still alive? Is he? Yeah. The last time I saw him, he was visiting a friend in Oakham, and I happened to be outside with my friend. And he was walking up the street, and I said, "Stand." He said, "Yeah." And then I told him who I who I was. You know. Um, I, I just spoke to somebody um, this summer, and I guess he's in a wheelchair. Oh. Um, but he's still doing well. Oh, yeah. that's he's having his nineties. Yeah, he is. Um, I think they may be having some kind of a reunion. Um, and if they are, and it's Clark people, actually, mm -hmm. and it's, I think it's at one of the, um, I don't know, I, 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 I'm not sure where it is, but I, it's going to be in Worcester. Yeah. Would you want to know? Sure. sure. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. Up. In fact, the Castriotas uh, and Barry, uh, both of them are very active in the 51 years at Clark. They, they always have a reunion. Yes. Yes. And, but they didn't have it this last year because uh, several, several of them died, you know. Right. But Ray, Ray and Gloria Castriano certainly should come in on that. Okay, so I'll let you know and then yeah. you can pass that yeah. on. Because yeah. they're very, very much active in class. Good. They go every year. I don't, you know, I've only been a few times. So. Right. Yeah. But this is something outside of Clark. It's just a group of Clark people who have been doing it over the years, and Stan has been part of it. So, yeah. I'll, and that's the first I knew of it. Yeah, so well, I'll I'll let you know. I I, I don't think you remember who, but I I think was the editor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else you want. Well, um, let's see. One more question. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Now on that water bottle, you know, <clears throat> our motto at Clark, I think the one that you and I identify with is "Let there be light." Right. Right. Yeah, right. Now yeah, right. they're dealing. Now they're looking at. Oh, it's kind of a new motto. They, it's not yeah. a replacement, but it's challenge, convention, change the world. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, how do you think women in the 40s 
challenged, I mean, do you feel you were challenging convention? Do you feel you were setting a new pace? I think we were more interested in getting a college degree so that, <clears throat> because it's still at that time you were expected to get married and have a family. Right. So if something happened, like your husband died and so forth, you had a background, you had something that you could contribute to the family and, uh, you know, make it successful. Right. Uh, I think, I don't think that we were out trying to challenge the world. Right. Particularly. I think we were more just get an education to have a background to help with your future rather than actually going out and challenge the world. Some of them did, I suppose. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, th so that was your perspective. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. Of course, I remember a couple of the teachers in there that became, they wrote books, you know, some of the ones that were in my dormitory wrote books. Right. You know. Right. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because you were living in it at the time, this is your perspective, but, you know, when you look at somebody uh, like myself, mm -hmm. you know, who went in the 60s, I look back to see what all of you accomplished, and it was, you were challenging convention. Let's yeah, oh, I think we, yeah, I think we all you know, really we were. Went, we went into the workforce, yeah. The women did into the workforce. Right. And, but you did go into the workforce, but you also, uh, you know, you made waves. You were coming in and doing something that was new. Mm -hmm. You were getting, you know, some resistance. There was probably more resistance than you realized. <laughs> it kind right. of didn't and, bother me. <laughs> and, and obviously you were successful at it because they kept it going. Well, the most, the most resistance we got was not being able to use that gym. Right. <laughs> well, yes, that's one of the things right there. And look at <clears throat> you were beating teams. Let's face it, that the men weren't. Yeah. Well, you see, uh, I was was just on a on a casual thing. We yes. didn't. We weren't like the men where they sold tickets and people came and everything. And well, they, they should have. Big games. Oh no. <laughs> Better games. Yeah. No, yeah. This was more on a. I could interact more. I know. It things. wasn't as organized. Oh, what is on, I didn't, it wasn't that important as far as the, the uh, class was concerned. Right. The men, the men were <clears throat> Right. Well, see, that's it. The men were important. And, you know, it was, I'm sure that maybe by the time you got into the 50s, yeah. that things began to be more organized and that it was, you know, you were able to use a gym and, and they were recognized maybe, but it, it, 